So GPU is the thing everyone cares about and incidentally yeah. is last. So it's not in order to keep people staying here the whole time, but because it really is sort of depends on everything else we've been talking about. Yeah, yeah. There's so many like links to other places. So, so, so first off, uh, GPUs. If your code doesn't use GPUs, if it doesn't know about GPUs, if it's like normal code, it cannot use GPUs. It needs to be built uh, uh, for GPUs. So if you scroll to the uh, visualization of the GPU program mm -hmm. over here, so GPU programs are typically sort of like you have this GPU part of the program that has been compiled against some GPU like type. So for example, your workstation type of a GPU or in our case, the cluster GPUs that we have. And this GPU part of the program works in conjunction with the CPU part of the program. And the CPU part of the program like tells uh, what the GPU part should run. So it will give, it, give data to, to the GPU part of the program. And then the GPU part program runs this so-called kernel. So it's usually like small bit of program that is run in parallel across these like GPU cores. So you have like, let's say you have like addition or vector addition or something, and it gets like two, two vectors or two numbers, uh, two arrays of numbers, and then it, it sums them together. In this case, like you could have one thread adding one number, and second thread would add a second number and so forth. And, and you would get all of the, the additions done in, in parallel. And of course, like nowadays, these are, they are very commonly used in physics codes, in, in deep learning, all kinds of things, because the GPUs, when you have so many of these individual cores, they can do a lot of like matrix multiplications and additions and that sort of thing that enable you to do like complex things like uh, deep learning, deep networks and that sort of thing. Uh, faster, so a lot faster. Um, mm -hmm. But the important part here is that, like, there needs to be this GPU part. There needs to be something compiled has... for the GPU so that the GPU can run it. But most like users use some code that is already being compiled uh, for GPUs. So, for example, like PyTorch or TensorFlow installations, or or they use some GPU code that we have installed or something like this. So they already have the kernels inside them. They already have the GPU programs inside them. So these mini programs that calculate, I don't know, like a matrix multiplication or something, they are already inside there. So they, they and the program is mainly like CPU program, but something sometimes something goes to the GPU and then it's calculated on the GPU and then it's done there. And like programs, uh, some programs also like do this, compilation automatically so they automatically compile stuff for the gpus uh, on the background so you don't necessarily have to code this gpu code you can use yeah. the gpus if the libraries or the framework that you're using supports it there's a question do you have an example of a code created for a gpu and i guess the uh, most yes yes like, like we have an example like in the TensorFlow. when we run the yeah one will compile should we go and do that yeah so uh, and and yeah, I'll quickly mention that when how Slurm thinks of these GPUs, how Slurm thinks of these is it, it sees these as these generic resources. So we reserve these resources. So we reserve a, a GPU, um, and when when we reserve it, it's basically bookmarked for us, and then we can do something with it. And and these GPUs are so popular and so expensive that like they are not usually in the interactive partitions but uh, so so and and they are very powerful gpus so so you really need to usually use a lot of work trying to get them fully utilized but let's let's look at the example of gpu code and how do we reserve okay. it um, i'm scrolling down running a typical gpu program i guess we'll see this when we do the example okay here we go running an example program that uses a GPU. Uh, we find the example repo. I guess let's get down straight to it. Yeah. So, so, so here we have a, like an example GPU program. So this is the same Py, Python, uh, like same algorithm that we previously used for the Py thing, but it's if, because it runs on the GPU, it's going to be like insanely faster. Yeah. 
Uh, so here we are going to compile it. So uh, so because this is C code or C++ code, uh, so uh, it will uh, it will need to be compiled. So they are like I mentioned, most people run stuff that is already compiled, so you don't need to worry about this. But for this yeah. case, let's just compile it. So if you so load these first modules, I clean all the modules I had, and I will load those. And if you're using GPUs, uh, you will hear the words CUDA all the time. So CUDA is this kind of like framework that NVIDIA has created that contains like lots of stuff so that users don't have to learn about the GPU hardware itself. It has a lot of libraries and, and there's lots of other things built on top of CUDA. For example, like TensorFlow, PyTorch, such like they use CUDA, they don't use like the GPUs themselves. They, they go through this CUDA framework so that they can use them. So if you yeah. just copy this monstrosity of a command, so this this basically tells us to compile it for all uh, different GPU architectures that are present. <laughs> it's in, but yeah, I guess the idea, we're yeah. compiling this code into something named this. Yes. OK, it takes a little bit of time, but it's done. OK. Yes. What if I try running it here without Slurm? Um, well, if you try running it, well, you can see what happens. Like it, it doesn't like it very much. Yeah. So okay, basically, so it basically doesn't work. Yeah, because there's no GPU device here. So it, yeah. It, the parts, the GPU parts, are not going to be executed. So yeah, it doesn't work. Okay. So we request one GPU, and run. Okay, should we do it? Yeah, let's do it. So it finished. Now we actually get some answer. This many throws. Pi is one yeah. four. Yeah, hit it hit, hit it fast. with a bigger one. Like that's that's too low. So hit it with like uh. So how much? The, this is there, one uh, billion. Uh, hit a one zero uh, there as well. Like one, extra one zero extra. So it's ten uh, billion. Three three three. Yeah. 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 So so this is like a, like even this is like, like, once you get it running, it's, it's very fast. So you notice here what we are asking. We are asking this generic resource TPU colon one. In some clusters, you might need to specify the the TPU type as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, like you can you can reserve TPU type specific TPU types. Uh, at least in our cluster, we have uh, different generations of GPUs, uh, and then uh, usually you want to like. The the bigger ones or the newer ones are more heavily congested, so you might want to like uh, you might want to yeah. uh, try to use if your code doesn't use the, all of the more he newer features of the GPUs, then I would recommend using the not so heavy ones. Uh, maybe you should try with the uh, debug queue, so the GPU short okay. queue. So in uh, in Triton we have this GPU short with this quite a bit older, uh, okay. GPUs. Like so yeah, so the GPUs are very popular because they are so heavily used nowadays. So yeah, that should probably give you a faster one. Hmm. Maybe they are. Right? Maybe everybody's running there right Maybe now. So everyone's. I guess everyone's doing this right now. So yeah, it might be. Okay. Um. Hmm. But the main thing is that you basically ask for a GPU and then you're granted the GPU. Um, in some sites, you might also need to specify a GPU partition. So um, there's a question in the notes that. Uh, like mm -hmm. you might not have the node available in your partition. So then you might need to put this dash P and give it a GPU partition name or something like that. Uh, it depends on like use, um, 
certain features or this uh, there's this s info command in the notes as well to see all of the available gpu architectures yeah. but yeah it looks like all of the gpus are basically what you use so this can happen so, like this can of course yeah, happen to anybody waiting um so special cases and common pitfalls so yeah what can go wrong when we're using gpus well the first the first things you should know is that gpus because they are so different to cpus they the utilization is completely like kind of a different kind of thing so if you have a problem which is not very big the gpus will just plow through it and then they will say to the cpu that okay i'm done continue where you left off and if your CPU part is very slow, you can often have a situation where the CPU is actually not doing anything, or it's working like 10% of the time, and 90% of the time it's just waiting for the GPU, a CPU to give some, uh, some like something for it to do. And in these cases, it's usually important to spot this, uh, this low utilization. So you can, while the job is running, you can take this SSH connection to the node where the GPU is and check what is the utilization using the NVIDIA SMI command that is presented here. Or you can, in, in Alto, you can use this uh, Slurm history command or this SACT command to, to see the GPU utilization. But this is often like a complicated thing and it's a good idea to come and talk with us on, on like if you encounter this kind of a situation. That you feel like the utilization is is not optimal, uh, or it takes longer than yeah. you expected, because like the GPUs in in clusters, they are like they are much bigger than the GPUs that you're using in in your workstations, mm -hmm. and it's very important that you get them fully utilized because they are like so powerful. If they're not fully utilized, they will just go through the material immediately, and then they will. Yeah. Just throw the stuff to the CPU. There's also Wait, a question what about of this metaphor yeah. for our cooking. So someone can be cooking so efficiently that they're running out of the materials, the ingredients, and they're spending more time walking to the fridge or the pantry to bring in more materials. So that way the stoves can't be fully occupied, in which case you need more CPUs to bring in that data there. Or you need more uh, data bandwidth in order like be able to carry more at once. And you need to be the code needs to be written so that it's optimized for reading in this data. Okay, should we yes. go on to other common problems? Yeah, the other common problem is that uh, like the, you might have the libraries loaded multiple times, or you might have uh, the libraries not loaded. So, like I mentioned, that the, like uh, the GPUs, uh, they usually like you access the GPUs using these libraries, like CUDA libraries. And when you're having a code, like like I don't know, like if in this case we had a compiled code, so we had a uh, uh, we had a uh, something that we compile ourselves. So we need to load the same CUDA module when we are using it. Uh, if we are running something like TensorFlow or PyTorch or some other code that is built with CUDA, so like remember, they are these built in kernels in these installations. Like when you install PyTorch, you also install some code that has been compiled against these CUDA libraries. So if they don't find these libraries, they will break. So when you're running stuff you need to make certain that you have the correct CUDA toolkit and the correct correct things installed in in your environment or whatever uh, in your like you have the correct things loaded and you don't have like multiple things loaded at the same time uh, so usually like there's instructions in our documentation on how to build like these like for example conda environments if you're using uh, pytorch tensorflow that sort of things if you're using other frameworks, you need to like make certain that the the code you're using uses the same CUDA yeah. that it was compiled against. There's a good question here. If my program does not use the full GPU memory, is it okay if I run several jobs on the same GPU? Well, this is a good is question. So this is not 
usually a problem. Like like GPUs, they work in these. Like you have usually a number of uh, threads. So I think in in the A hundred cards, for example, that we have, there's like if I remember correctly, it's like seven thousand, eight thousand of these. So you have like basically eight thousand CPUs there. They're like eight thousand of these uh, GPU cores. And if you add more like stuff there, if you're currently utilizing all of those, uh, but you're not like you're you using all of those eight thousand uh, like cores, but you're not using the full memory, uh, adding more jobs for it to do doesn't really help, right? Like it it will just make that like all of these eight thousand are already used. So it's it's much more important to use like all of the all of the parallel threads. Like it's it's more important to use the whole width of the calculations. Like GPUs, they usually work in that like they have a you you can think of it as something of like a wide wide conveyor belt. Like there's a conveyor belt and there's stuff coming into it, and every every like like every second it's it's doing. Uh, it's like plowing through all of the calculations what it's doing and if you're using the whole width of the conveyor belt so if you're using all of the compute threads you if you add more stuff to it it doesn't make it do any faster because then it, it just means that you're like the conveyor belt is already full and and this is like if you're running like this example for example in in like like MNIST training or something like this the trivial examples that are given in in tutorials for like uh, deep mm. learning, these are basically just like I don't know like five percent of the whole conveyor belt. So like they the whole GPU like you you we, the speed might be similar to what you run on your laptop or something like it might be similar to what you run on your workstation because like the power only comes with the the size of the problem. Like the the power of the GPU, the fast it's faster only when when it can utilize the whole width of the uh, like cal calculation. So if the calculations are really small, yes. it it it's not faster. But if they are wide and if you have a lot of things to do, they are faster. So with GPUs, so, you usually need to think of it more into like this kind of like <laughs> not in a in yeah. it's not a sequence. It's a like a wide lane that you uh, yeah. go through. So could we say that memory of GPUs is usually not the limiting factor? And if it's not using all the processing cores, then that's something wrong itself. So there's yes. never a case where, like, or very rarely a case, you'd have multiple different tasks yes. on the same GPU. Yeah, like memory is possible. usually the limiting factor only when you start running like really big let's say language models or something like that way it doesn't anymore fit into the memory so the a100s that we have they have 80 gigabytes of memory and the uh, v100s they have 32 gigabytes of memory so if if it doesn't fit into the memory anymore then you start to have problems but there are solutions for this as well okay let's keep looking at the other pitfalls reserving specific GPU types. So there's a question, do we manually select which GPU our job would work? So by default, it will give you any available GPU. But of course, some of them may be older than others, in which case you can use this constraint option to say, I only want it to run on these different types of newer GPUs. So that way the code won't crash. But if possible, you should accept any possible type. And also the billing mm. of the GPUs is arranged so the more powerful ones cost more. Mm. So yeah, you you're need not to wait longer for... by using the bad one, the mm. older ones. There's an excellent question from the short queue. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. There's an excellent question in the in the notes. So so there's a question that can't you like when you request a GPU, do you really need to like get the full GPU? You cannot only get a part of it, and this is exactly the case. Like because these are these resources, like generic resources, like they are there's only one GPU right there. And because of like 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 yeah, because GPUs are much more like fragile when it comes to like other people running there, the multi-user running is not really an option. So you will get one GPU, like an actual physical GPU when you're running GPU codes and reserving a GPU. So 
you will get the whole thing. Uh, so if you only use a part of it, you have, like the rest of it, it's not doing anything. Nobody else can use that rest the rest of it. So uh, yeah. you can on GPU run like the it like it can run multiple things on the same time by you. Like you can run these kernels that I mentioned. You can run multiple of these in the same GPU, but that's all using happening in the background. You don't have to think about it. But it's it can run multiple of these calculations at the same time on the background, uh, like the GPUs. But usually that's something that yeah you don't have to worry about. But you it's reserved only for you, and that's why it's very important that you utilize it to the maximum extent because like cheap like for example what we see now when Richard is waiting there in the queue if all of the GPUs are occupied then uh, it just means that there's less resource for everybody so whenever you ask for a GPU it's a good idea to uh, to try to utilize it to the fullest extent but of course at the same time do play around and test it out like but it's important to make certain that what, like, if you're training a model, train it first a few steps and see if it works. If it works or seems promising, then train it better. Don't train it for five days and then realize that it's crap. But cancel it beforehand. Like, I cancel it if you see that it's going to a wrong direction or if, if it doesn't look promising, because then it means that somebody else can use the GPUs. Like, it's a shared resource and they are so expensive that it needs to be like everybody everybody needs to <laughs> try to uh, common, commonly be like uh, try to use them to the best of their abilities yeah should we go back to the lesson and see what maybe we can quickly go through these points about um so we talked about reserving the specific gpu types there's a short queue for quick debugging, which sometimes can even be cool. If you get a message that says libcuda one can't open shared object file, no such file or directory, basically what that means is you're running the GPU code on a thing that's not a GPU node, and it doesn't work, which often happens when people try to test their codes on the login node. So basically, then use srun to grab the GPU. So what about the different Python deep learning frameworks? What special things are needed in order to use those? Yeah, so so quite often we have the case of people uh, asking, um, asking us about like, uh, like how to create an environment that, that like works like where the CUDA and the uh, Python deep learning framework are together because Python is nowadays so popular uh, especially in deep learning and quite often there's the case that like the installation didn't go through or something like that, that something went awry and they install well, well it, it just doesn't work so I recommend checking our documentation because it's it's extensively documented there that how do you create these environments? Because like it's you need to have a framework that has the correct CUDA version there. And there are tools like the conduct, for example, it can manage this this trouble. It can find you corresponding pieces. But it, it gets very technical quickly, and I don't want to bore anybody else who's not. Yeah, OK. But but, but I, right. I recommend checking yeah. this here uh, so you know okay. how to create like an environment suitable for you. OK. CUDA architecture flag. So basically, if you're compiling your own code, you can make it run on every GPU and not just some. Keeping GPUs occupied was the metaphor about keeping enough supplies while you're cooking. So basically having enough incoming data bandwidth to supply the data as fast as possible. And I guess you can read this as well as we can say. Yeah. I'll, I'll quickly mention oh. that. Uh, so so uh, like this is something that most likely is the biggest culprit of, of like underutilization of our GPUs. So basically, usually you need to 
when you're doing GPU computing, you yeah, unless you're running some physics code that completely just runs in the GPU and doesn't like ever leave there. Like for example, with deep learning, you usually have something that you have data, and the data is read by the CPU. The data is pre-processed by the CPU to be in a correct format, and then that is then converted into this kind of like tensor that is sent to the GPU memory, and then it calculates like okay, this is uh, how, how the model thinks about it, and uh, this is how the model should change. And then it comes back to the CPU and asks for more data. And and if the CPU is there just hanging around and waiting like while the GPU is doing the calculation, it's surprised by, okay, I now need to get more data. And then it, if it gets the data, the GPU is just waiting around there. So this is not good. And And that's why all of these frameworks have like, massive documentations on how to optimize these data pipelines and it's just it's an annoying part of the whole program but usually that is the most like cost effective way of speeding up your code spending uh time on the data pipeline optimization and it's annoying part but it's something that usually needs to be done if you like you cannot like for example the large language models that we have been mentioning like they use something like 200 petabytes of data. Like, can you imagine how long it takes to read 200 petabytes of data? So, so it's it's insane amount of data. So, or I think plus 40 petabytes yeah. or some of these. Like, like mm -hmm. you need to have a massive framework to read that data in, so that you can give it into these language models. So, uh, so you need to have uh, like <laughs> you need to have a lot of engineering around this data loading and this is like something yeah. that we can help you with so so come and join us and if, discuss about it if you have problems related to this okay uh what's next profiling gpu usage with nvprof so i guess this is a um well you there's a tool that will profile things you can read this yourself how do we get there I'm trying to get quickly to either to the general Q&A part. And here's a list of the available GPUs and architectures. So there is a question. Note that each of these, uh, yeah, this is, is this up to date? This looks like it might be. Or there might be more here that aren't listed. Yeah, I think that's up to that. Anyway. I might have, uh, I might have mistaken. I think I, uh, the amount of data needed for the training was, was I think, for the stable diffusion kind of models because they are image mm -hmm. models and they require. So mm -hmm. the chat GPT requires less data, but still a lot of data. Yeah. Okay. So these exercises, I think we, do we need to do them together? Yeah, it, it, it would have been good to... to run these exercises, but as we can see from the uh, Richard's terminal, uh, the GPUs <laughs> are fully utilized, so it's very hard to do exercises yeah. when you don't have a GPU to run it on. Uh, so, so I think it's better to leave them as a homework. But should we go uh, to a general Q and A?